sometimes you just have to accept that that was pretty shit. Uh, it's the West Ham match floor coming up, so make sure you stick around for not the greatest of performances we've ever seen. It's coming up. <laughs> Welcome back to Black and White Banter, you lovely, lovely Newcastle fans. It's match day, I'm just leaving the house, I've just bounced out of the shower. Bounced out of the shower more than normal. Eddie Howe's Wembley Mags have got me dancing to local hero in the shower, even louder than I normally do, even stompier than I normal do, normally do. So I'm just leaving the house, heading over to St James's Park, just about to jump on the Metro. As I said in the match preview, I'm a little bit, I feel a little bit on the fence with this game. I think it's going to go one of two ways. It'll either be... Bit of a stalemate or will absolutely batter them. And I think that's because this is a bit of a step into the unknown. Going into matches after just getting to a cup final. It's weird. Like, we've had the most emotional week as Newcastle fans. To get tuned straight back into Premier League action is difficult. But West Ham haven't travelled away from home very well at all this season. We're the better team on paper. St James's Park, I think, will be rocking because I love the night games. But before I go any further into this match vlog, if you are new to this video, please drop down and give us one of them. Whether you're new or you're not new, that goes a long way. And if you like this match vlog, by the end of this, whack that subscribe. That means a lot to me. So let, without further ado, let's get over to St. James's Park. Team news will be coming in in about 10, 15 minutes. Let's get over there now before it gets dark and soak up a bit of post-Wembley reaching atmosphere. How are you, the lads? Team news has just dropped. He's gone for St. Maximin. So that was causing the bit. I actually fancied Anthony Gordon to come in just because of my trust issues with St. Maximin's defensive capabilities. This is a bit of a fragile West Ham team, so I hope that won't be sort of caught out too much. Isaac hasn't made the squad. We all wondered whether he would with that head injury, but St. Maximin is on the left-hand side. So there's going to be loads of Newcastle fans happy as Larry to see him in the team. So let's see what he can do. This is a very, very big chance for him. But apart from that, we are unchanged, which you've got to be happy with. <laughs> Time one all, not very good after that. It really wasn't. We started fantastic, came out the traps. Willock blasted one in, obviously, was given off. So, uh, the ball out. I would like to hope VAR have got that one right. If they can't see whether a ball's gone out or not, there's something sadly wrong with that VAR studio. But then, Callum Wilson, literally within two minutes, bang, fantastic goal that was straight through, lovely into the bottom corner. And we never built on it, we never, we never, never built on it. And that's the disappointing thing there. But We've been sloppy with the ball, we've given it away a lot. I tell you what, St. Maximin, I know I sound like a hater of his. He hasn't impressed me at all. He hasn't he hasn't been he hasn't showed for the ball. He hasn't been defensively very good, which is what I'm always worried about with him. But generally, we as a team have been very sloppy with that football. I'd say West Ham have even maybe edged it. And I'll tell you what I'm worried about from that first half. We are missing Bruno. Joe Linton in the middle, we know he's great at what he does, but he's not Bruno. He's, he, we look like we are just missing that linchpin to play the ball to in the centre to make something happen for that final creative pass. We've just been pretty generally flat. The atmosphere has been a little bit flat because of that first half performance, and it's been a little bit disappointing. Now, I know Newcastle are turned into a second half team, and I keep saying that, so fingers crossed we can come out with that same intensity that we're getting more used to now because it could only get better because that first half wasn't very good. I would maybe look to bring Gordon on for his debut, give him maybe 20 minutes. You've got Murphy as well. We don't have another strike option, so Callum Wilson's probably going to have to see this one out. But it can only get better. And I was a little bit disappointed with that half, and I think Eddie Howe will be as well. So come on, lads. Let's sort it out in that second half. Right, I'm just joined by John, he's just come out of the stadium. John, I started this video by saying that was pretty shit, putting it politely. 
What do you think we were missing today? Well, I think we were missing Bruno in the middle to prepare me. I think it was just a spark missing in the midfield. I feel like it was very like tight. I thought West Ham were decent to be fair in the mm. middle. Uh, I just think it was too congested. We don't really have someone to break the lines down very well. Like Willock, um, you know, Joe Linton. You know, we've got a lot of ball carriers, but that final pass, that final spark just seems to be missing. Considering like the first five minutes, I thought we would absolutely smash them after them like two quick goals. Yeah. But it just never really, just wasn't with day. You know what I mean? I totally agree on Bruno, and I was kind of expecting you to say that, to be totally honest. I yeah. feel like we had a lot of players just sort of looking for that final pass, where Bruno would be there to then pass on something creative yeah. to the forward players. Exactly. Do you think... Right, I'm just joined by Mark. He's just come outside the stadium. Mark, that was, as I've already talked about to a couple of people so far, that was pretty poor. What do you think we were missing today? Uh, I think... I think for me, I think we're struggling in midfield. I think, I think the passing was poor. I think we're, the passing was way off today. Um, but I think I, it was sloppy. It was the the pace of the passes was weak. It was like I don't know if it's complacency or I don't know if it's struggling with the intensity of like we've got a small squad. Yeah. So many players are playing a game after game. I don't know if it's struggling or whatever. But um, yeah, intensity. And, but. We've all said for, for a while that we're looking at a creative midfielder. Yeah. I think the three in midfield, I think they've been fantastic. But they're all kind of much of a much, isn't it? I think we need one, somebody a little bit different. Madison or that type of player, somebody who can lock a defence. How how do you think we coped without Bruno today? Well, he's, he's, he's always going to be huge, miss. Yeah. Um, that goes without saying. Um, I, think, I think we did all right. But I think the, the problem is, I think we're always going to have that. If he's injured or missing, you need to have a backup plan. And I don't think, because you're a three or four on much of a muchness, I don't think we'll have a natural replacement, which in fairness, probably not many teams do have. Mm -hmm. um, no, of course. But I think that's that's the challenge going forward. Where's the creativity come from? Because Julian and Willick, Longstaff, they're great defensively and the graft does, but they're not massively creative. So I think that's the challenge going forward. I agree. I agree one yeah. final question, big one from today, and it's already causing debate on social media from what I've seen. St. Maximin got his first start in a while. What did you think of his performance? I know it's very like hot and cold for St. Maximin. I think he might just not have the intensity for the setup that we kind of play, like mm -hmm. a really high press type of type of play. Mm -hmm. And I think when Gordon come on, I felt like he'd give a little bit intensity more, was a little there, bit wasn't more it? intensity. I don't know if that's I don't know what I say, Maxim, I never know if he's half injured or how he is. He's always strapped up, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously, on his day, I remember against Man City, he absolutely tore them apart, you know what I mean? It's like mm -hmm. we're trying to want that we, back We, we again. keep going yeah. back to that game, though, don't we? That's yeah. the interesting thing. We always say it. Remember that Man City game? Yeah. We just haven't seen it for so long. I know. And I can, I can potentially, I can see him being moved on in the summer, like, mm -hmm. if nothing else, because we don't have a lot of players to sell to raise funds mm -hmm. for FFP. And yeah, you know, yeah. If, if you could get 30, 40 million for him, I don't know if you, if you would like, but it, maybe, it might just be a... You know, a better player that can come in there yeah. for, for this type of system that Eddie's playing. That's mm -hmm. all I can say. But I don't dislike the lad, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He, he does try, but just think he might not be right for the setup. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for speaking. I mean, are you a fan of St. Maximin? Yeah. He, he just split opinion a little bit. On his day, Man City, unplayable. Everybody keeps mentioning Man City. Everybody, yeah. which I agree, I agree. Unplayable. You know, like, I mean, how would you think it? Both. A long time ago, wasn't it? You've, you've got a 25 man squad. Every single squad player in every position is valuable. Can you keep a player on for that one spark of genius in once every 90 minutes or once every 180 minutes? Bit of a luxury, do you mean? For me, no. Um, I think Gordon, when he came on, he was, was far right. more effectual in that position. Mm -hmm. Left hand side, he crafted more, more intent with the passes and he seemed more decisive. Which I think is probably Sam Maxon's weakness. He, he seems to be indecisive at times. But on his day, he's unreal. Would he be happy as a squad player? I don't think so. I think for me, it's probably time to cash in. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Full time Newcastle fans, one all. And as I started this match vlog with, you don't like to be negative with this Newcastle team. We've absolutely loved every moment of this season. We are fully with them. So. It's more that our expectations have maybe changed a little bit without even realising. We expect to batter teams at St James's Park. We expect intensity. We expect chances. And all of that was missing today. Um, 
We started the game fantastically. Obviously, Willock banger into the bottom corner, given through VR uh, to uh, not to be. And then Callum Wilson, before you can even sit back in your seat. Lovely goal, by the way. That goal was very much old fashioned Shearer esque to me. Ball through, go on, son, carrying it through the middle, driving through and smashing it in the bottom corner. It was lovely. And I, all I thought when that ball went in, as I think every person in the stadium did, was onslaught, onslaught coming. And it just wasn't meant to be. That, that wasn't the way the game went at all. We, we didn't push on from that goal, which I think in the first half especially was really, really disappointing. Now, everyone's saying it, and I'm going to say it. Bruno really does know what we need, doesn't he? Uh, and we know that we need him, more importantly. That was a, a worrying insight for me into how lacking we are in midfield. So, obviously, Shelby went out. You couldn't write it that Bruno obviously got sent off just after we got rid of Shelby. So we are very short in there. And what was massive, massive phase as a player today was Longstaff having the ball, Joe Linton having the ball, and then looking for what would normally be Bruno in the middle to take the ball and create something from there. And that's what we missed. That's what we really, really missed. There was lots of bursting forward and no option in that centre. Bruno just makes us tick in that way. And Joe Linton, as much as I love seeing him in the centre, he just doesn't offer that. He doesn't, he does the, some of the stuff that Bruno doesn't in my opinion, as much that that athletic running. But yeah, it, it, it's very easy to say that obviously we're very short in there, but you've got to think Bruno's one of our best players by a country mile. He's one of the best players in the Premier League, in my opinion, in his position. And you don't have another Bruno on the bench. You don't have another Bruno on the bench. So it, it's the squad depth was, worries me because that's an insight into what we are like without a player like Bruno. And obviously with Shelby leaving, on deadline day, it's ironic that he's had this sending off. And I do I am concerned about that central midfield because I'm sure in the second half, for example, Joe Linton with his yellow card for diving, he couldn't make tackles at that point. I'm sure Eddie Howe would have liked to have brought another central midfielder on, but he's probably looking at his bench thinking, what do I have? What do I have there? I can't. So, you know, you've got Elliot Anderson at a push. So that concerns me. Um, all we need is another injury. You know, like, for example, Longstaff to get injured next week. Willick to pick up a knock. We are so limited in that central area. And I think that, if I'm being honest with you, with this Champions League push that everyone keeps talking about, that could be our, be our Achilles heel. That may be our chances taken in games as well, because defensively everyone knows we are sound and we were sound again today. But yeah, Bruno, that was a, that was a telltale sign of what, what we may be missing when we play without him. And Longstaff, Joe Linton, as much as their graft was absolutely brilliant, we just we need him in that centre to make us tick on a, on a creative level. Um, obviously, the other player who's, who's the talking point from that game going into it and after is Alan St. Maximin. Nah, not for me. I've spoke to a couple of other fans who all seem to have the same opinion from the ones I've spoke to since coming out of the stadium. It's not that I dislike Alan St. Maximin, because I know I talk about him in a lot of videos and not being convinced. I want my mind to be changed, but that's a great opportunity for him today. That's an absolutely... Fantastic opportunity for Alan St. Maximin today to really knock on Eddie Howe's door and say, right, I'm here. I want to play these next three games without Bruno and I'm going to stay in this team. And he just didn't do it for me. I thought his intensity is not there to suit this, this team. I don't know. It's a system he doesn't suit. I actually think Alan St. Maximin has changed his playing style to pass it way more than he's ever done before. And that actually makes him a worse player. In a way, yes, passing is important and decision making is important. But when was the last time you saw St. Maximin get you off your seat by taking on two or three? He's, he's almost looking for a pass straight away now. And he switches off. And defensively, I'll keep talking about it. He's not at the races for me. And I think Eddie Howe is still not convinced. And I don't think he'll be convinced after that. I think Anthony Gordon, when he came on in his place in the second half, looked brighter in 10 minutes than what St. Maximin had done for most of the game. And that might sound harsh, but I'm just calling it as I felt like I saw it. I thought Anthony Gordon, to be fair to him, as our new sign, and he had a couple of good passes, a couple of little flashes of what he could do on what was a pretty off day. We were sloppy in our passing. Defensively, we were sound apart from the goal. It looked a little bit sloppy from what I could see, but I think passing-wise and intensity, that's one of the worst performances of the season at St. James's Park. It really, really was. Was there a bit of a hangover from what's happened on Tuesday? Not physically, but mentally. So many emotions in the week. Probably lots of players celebrating with the families, like your long staffs and whatnot. I don't know. Um, not an, that shouldn't be an excuse. Shouldn't be an excuse. Man United went through the same thing. 
they played in the cup earlier in the week and they got over the line. A little bit different for us, for, for what it meant to us as fans. But I thought West Ham were a little bit better than what we maybe gave them credit for coming into this game, me included. I thought they were a lot more organised. But we just, we weren't at the races. And after we started the game so well, that's what was disappointing for me in the first half, that we didn't push on at all. Um, not helped at all, like I say, by that lack of Bruno and St Maximin. Almiron, I actually think, was was the vocal point for more than what St Maximin was. Um, and we didn't have great substitutions to bring on, and Isaac wasn't there to bring on neither. But hey, look, Cup final in three weeks. There's so much still to be happy about. We, it's not always going to be roses in the garden. Teams are going to start coming here, happy to leave with a point, as we keep talking about, and trying to organise more and more and more to try and match our press and match our intensity and I think Eddie Howe has set the bar so high that when it when it's that poor, we can still call it poor, but we have a slightly different expectation at St James's Park. Maybe not away from home as much, but at St James's Park, it's become a fortress where we absolutely batter teams, and that's why today was a little bit disappointing. But we are we another game unbeaten. We are another game unbeaten. We've got two matches before this cup final. All of our thoughts are on that cup final. Do I think we're going to drop off in this fight for Champions League? I do. And that just comes for me through squad depth and that, that chances, the chances taken that we seem to still be struggling with a little bit, albeit today we didn't create very much. I do think we're going to drop off. I think we'll get European football and I'm not a pessimist in that way. I'm not being negative. I just think top four might be a bit of a stretch by the time the season goes on. But hey, Newcastle fans, another, another draw, another game unbeaten, another point on the board in that challenge on that, in those top four positions. Cup final in a couple of weeks, it's not all bad. It's never always going to be a great day at the office. You can't expect that 99 times out of 100. We're going to get a couple of days like this, but onwards and upwards. Eddie Howe knows it wasn't great. The players will know. There's another game in a week. Time to recover. Get a couple of players back. Your likes of your Isaacs and whatnot. And onwards and upwards. Newcastle fans, if you've stuck around this long, please drop down and give us one of them little subscribes and one of them likes. It goes a very, very long way. And enjoy the rest of your weekend. The Mags are going to Wembley. we another game unbeaten. Things are still pretty rosy, even if that game was pretty shit by our normal standards. I'll see you on the next one. Away the lads. Oh,